All right, so tonight's the night. It's supposed to get down to about 28, 29 degrees, and it's gonna be rainy. So a lot of that water is gonna to turn to ice, and then that ice can cause more damage because the tree might start to warm it up. And then that temperature will be going away from those fruit buds. So I've got a little bit of a system here worked out. We've been doing some preparation out here. Hopefully we'll be able to save some of this fruit, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what we've got planned. All right, so I've got the Jeep out here and I've hooked to the back two 55 gallon rain barrels. So these are empty right now so that nothing will freeze before we need to use them. But we're going to be driving these back and forth between here and the house where we've got some of those frost free spigots. And that's where I'm going to be filling these up. And in the Jeep here, we've got, also got our pressure washer, which we'll be using to mist the trees once the rain stops uh, and some spare hoses as well. So the hose, I've got here will connect into the rain barrels here and since they're up on the trailer that should help with uh, gravity feeding and I'll probably park this up on the side here where the where the slopes a bit higher so I can get just a little bit of extra and then we'll be going into the hose here the hose will go off into the orchard and I'm gonna we got four rows of trees in the orchard so I will have that hose go in between this back row here since winds should be coming in from the north here and then I can work my way into these rows as much as I need to uh, to spray them. You can obviously tell some other work we've done out here as we've got these bags I feel like a human bag worm right now bagging these trees up like this but we looked for clusters of good candidates for saving. So even if everything else fails, maybe these bags can hold in just a little bit extra. Since a big part of the problem tonight is that that ice trying to thaw once the tree is encased in it, once that's starting to thaw, it gives up that heat. By covering these up, these should stay dry. And so then if the temperatures do hold true to what's been predicted, then you know, they, they can withstand those temperatures. It's just if they're losing extra heat to melting ice, that's gonna be what causes the problem. So we looked for branches uh, similar to this where you've got several of these others coming up, but you've got uh, more blooms along the main branch. So that's like what's covered under there where we, have, we would have even more blooms along here. So hopefully there are some in the center there that even though this is plastic and you know the ones that are touching the plastic may get just harmed just as much as anything else, the ones inside of that should hopefully be insulated from that. But the hoses I have should get us out. We should be able to get at least to this peach tree or so and then the sprayer can get out to a couple of these cherries as well. And we'll see how long it takes but from what I've been watching of what other people have done, the as long as I can get to each tree about every 20 minutes or so throughout the night, maybe 30 minutes might work given it won't be super cold, but that might be enough to just go ahead and get these coated. Apples, definitely I'm not so worried about the ice on those breaking anything. They're good strong wood, same with uh, pears, uh, but some of these uh, smaller stone fruit branches like that on that nectarine there, are ones I'm not so sure how well they're gonna hold up under that weight. And I also plan to have a couple small fires, both with my own for my own hands so I can stay warm, uh, but also to provide some bottom heat as we'll be switching from more of an advective frost to the radiation frost. So the plan is to have like a small fire right here, you know, in between these trees, and then with the north winds, hopefully that can push it to where it'll help the liberty I really want to save some of. And even having this trash bag here will help me make sure I don't get too big of a fire. If you have a big bonfire, you can actually cause that cold air to come back down uh, and break through that inversion layer and cause more damage than you're trying to prevent. So, you know, we'll be adding just one log at a time and hopefully that'll keep a small enough fire that we're only doing good for these trees and just kind of adding to the overall heat in here uh, and getting that done. The other thing I did last night is I went through and I mowed all the grass in here. From what I've read, if you keep really short grass and preferably even no grass, uh, then the soil can take more in and then be releasing that in the night. 
kind of radiating that heat back up to the trees and that can be helpful. And definitely I hadn't mowed in here yet, so that was something I went ahead and, and did out here just to, to see how, how well that can help as well. Any extra half a degree even I can get out here, I'm gonna take. I'll check back in with you tonight and uh, we'll see how this is going. All right, so it's about 6.30. I'm out here at the spigot and I've got that up here. Starting to fill these up and the firewood is in the back here with a bag of kindling. So ready to get some fire started. I'm waiting until the snow settles down at least a little bit before we get too deep into that. Now it is a little bit too late. It's about 33 degrees out. So it's a little bit too late for starting spraying except that we already had rain and I'm monitoring just how these look and we are still seeing and we're still seeing some uh, dripping off of these. So they're already wet. We've already got that process started and they're still dripping. So they're not at the point where they're fully frozen yet. Uh, so it's not too late at this point to be freezing these. So just kind of a nature chose how we were going to handle this problem. Didn't get much of a choice. And the snow as it's been adding in has been solidifying almost some of this see if i touch this here then it kind of uh, absorbs onto my finger and just runs down my finger it's not fully solid yet so i am curious to see how snow will affect this whole situation uh, this tree i will not be able to protect so we will come back and we'll just see what the fruit yield is off of this tree here uh, the one over here through a trash bag uh, like in the orchard over top of uh, a limb where we thought maybe we could save some fruit in there and we actually threw some christmas lights over here i'll show you those we heard that throwing some old style christmas lights out here on some of these limbs uh, could help add a little bit of heat onto these limbs and uh, hopefully help some of these blossoms so you know we'll see how that goes see if that has any effect on this if you know these lit up branches will have any sort of fruit on them in comparison to the rest of the tree. Kind of compare those yields. You know, that one doesn't seem terribly uh, useful. I don't know how much heat that's actually gonna give out, but we are potentially only looking at needing a degree or two. So in that situation, maybe it will help. So hopefully we're gonna answer a lot of questions with all these experiments today and uh, hopefully get some more sleep later this week. <laughs> All right, so I've got connected in here, and it is enough gravity here that if we follow this guy all the way back, then it does actually work. I found I do have enough pressure back here, and everything is running. So thankfully I got it up and running now before it got a little bit darker, but I'll show you how well it's going and how well it sprays, and hopefully uh, this will continue throughout the night. I'll keep this going enough that nothing freezes in my pipes. I might shovel some snow over top of this main one I got. I tried this green one, but there were too many kinks in it, so it didn't actually let the water through, but the rest of these have no kinks, and it's been working fine. So let's, let's take a look. Well, it's now 1.30, and we actually had our hoses freeze up on us that went from the rain barrel to our sprayer. So that's no longer an option. But we've got all these fires going, and I tried to put them uh, kind of in between each set of four trees, at least in some of these areas that are looking to have heavier crops this year. So hopefully that'll help us save as much as we can. And in measuring some of the temperatures out here, we were measuring 37 degrees on a few of these, so it is 29 outside, uh, at least everywhere else. So these are definitely adding some heat. It's going to take quite a bit of wood, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and try and keep a lot of these going and see if we can get some fruit. So we'll check back in here uh, later in the morning and see how things look.
Well, it's 8 a.m., so I want to check in and show you how things went. We are supposed to get one to three inches, and I'd say that was about the right range. Luckily, the ground held up under all of our driving. Didn't have any times where we got stuck or anything. So the winds were coming from the north. So, especially on a fire like this one where I was just trying to heat just the one tree, I just put it directly north of that. And if you look around, most of these are still covered in some amount of ice, but they are already dripping. So it's not even above 32 yet and these are dripping. Hopefully they've been dripping throughout the night and not been in a state where they were fully frozen. Certainly though, I expect ones further from the fire to uh, have that circumstance, but never quite know how much that heat affected the overall area from just having uh, the one fire here. Situations that led to a whole lot more benefit, and I'm sure, are these trees over here, uh, like the, the Freedom and the Liberty over here, that have one at each corner. So, um, if we're going to have a lot of benefit on any trees, I'd imagine it'd be these guys. And even some of these leaves up here are dry. So, they not only warmed up and melted, but went ahead and uh, dried off at least on the undersides and I think that definitely be a boon to what we're trying to do here so pretty excited to see some of that going on so you know I might expect this flower cluster here to be just fine but of course only with time will we know for sure out here with the nectarines same kind of thing some of these blooms out here were ones that were uh, more directly heated by these fires. Uh, where ones up at the top, I don't really expect to see a lot of positive result. Once that sprayer went down, we couldn't use that anymore. We couldn't get to the high branches and I'm not sure how much that heat was going up there. It is possible that the heat was melting those enough and just snow hasn't fallen off. Uh, but certainly these seem to be a lot more promising. I had to prioritize which trees I wanted, so I was kind of putting the fires around the favorite trees and then the trees that have uh, the most blooms on them, uh, the most potential for fruit. And I certainly favor this peach tree since it's ready after the Japanese beetles are gone. So this one, you can tell a lot of these limbs here on the bottom, and it's a lower tree which helped with that, but a lot of these limbs here don't have any ice on them anymore, or if they do, it's dripping. So at least I expect this half of the tree over here, having that fire here, the one back there, and the one over here, all around and fairly close, I expect that we'll at least hopefully have a crop here, at least a higher potential for one than most. That was the last fire I put out here, and I don't know if it was close enough to this plum to help. I figured if I could only do one out here, put it here and let that uh, work its way uh, to the south and uh, maybe help some of that. At least this closest limb here seems to be partially dry and uh, some of it wet. So, you know, I don't expect that next plum to do anything for me, but maybe we'll get some off of this. And then of course the, the blueberry here I'm sure was helped by it, so maybe this will be our best producing blueberry bush this year. We were trying to, to spray the cherries when we were out here. These are uh, two sweet cherries here, this is a tart cherry, and we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. Over here, I did put out the fires here and down here. This one primarily for, for the big peach here to try and get up into that canopy a little bit and help it out. I'm hoping that I can stop adding to these fires here shortly. Once I see all these trees are dripping, then I'll know we're close enough to the warm temperatures that I can, you know, give it a rest. So we'll uh, see how these turn out and I'll keep you guys informed. Certainly, I think we have a much better hope now than we would have if we hadn't done any of this. It did get down to about 27 degrees which is what it read in my house at least. Ha we have an external uh, thermometer that's tied in to our thermostat, and that's what that was reading. So we'll see if that 
Uh, turns out to have been accurate and uh, just how much we lose here probably in the next few weeks as we see fruit setting. So thanks for watching and uh, tune back in hopefully for a positive video about all the fruit we're going to get. So anyway, I'll uh, catch you guys in the next one.